Hello everyone, so in this tutorial we're going to see how we can build a characteristic table uh, from the truth table of SR flip-flop. Alright, so this is the characteristic table and we're going to build it using the truth table of SR flip-flop. Alright, so let's begin. So in the characteristic table there are two parts. So in the left part uh, we'll write the flip-flop inputs which would be S and R in this case and the present state which would be q t all right or you can just write it as q and in the right part we'll write the next state which can be q t plus one or it could be q plus all right so you can denote it uh, using anything all right so in the left part we got three separate variables so q s and r and the in the right part uh, we're just going to write about the next state which is q t plus one so in the left part there are three separate variables so that means we will get eight different combinations right so from zero to seven all the binary numbers are written here right from zero to seven all the binary numbers are written here so eight different combinations so what we need to understand is how we would write the uh, next state values here. So why is it written 0, 0, 1 or indeterminate? So we're going to understand that. So let's begin. So in the first row we can see that S and R, the flip-flop inputs, have the values of 0 and 0. Now we're going to go back to the truth table and we'll see what the output is for inputs 0 and 0. So we can see that the output is memory slash no change. All right. Now we are going back to the characteristic table, and we'll write here z zero. So how can we write here zero? So how can we write zero here? So since S and R were zero, and it produced no change in the output from the SR flip flops truth table, so we'll take a look at the present state, and we'll write the same value as the present state that's why it said no change right so that means we'll, we will not change the value of the present state we'll write the same value as the present state values okay so in the first row the present state had zero so the next state would have zero again so for the next value s equals to zero and r equals to one so we'll go back to the truth table and we'll see that the output the main output actually produced 0 for 0 1 combination so if we do get the uh, do get a direct value from the truth table then we can just write that value in the next state so we'll write 0 in the next state all right so let's think about another combination so s equals to 1 r equals to 0 so if s1 and r0 we can see that the output produced 1 in the truth table so again we are getting a value directly so we can write this same value in the next state all right then for one one we can see that the output was not used right so that means we could not use these specific combinations so that's why we wrote not used in the state uh, in the state of output all right so we could write not used here or we can write indeterminate so both indeterminate or not used are correct all right so for the next combination again s equals to 0 and r equals to 0 and we can see from the table that for 0 0 the output would produce no change that means the next state would remain same as the previous state so the present state basically the present state is 1 and the next state would be same as the present state that's why it said no change all right so the present state is one that's why the next state it the next state is one again and for zero one we got a value directly all right so we wrote that value for one zero we got one from the truth table and we wrote that value and for one one the truth table said not used so we can write not used or indeterminate in this place all right so this is the overall characteristic table for SR flip-flop so we can build the characteristic table using the help uh, of truth table alright so now we're going to 
build the excitation table based upon the characteristic table so we are going to build the excitation table based upon the t based upon the characteristic table all right so in the excitation table there are two parts in the left part uh, we would write uh, the present state and the next state so q and q plus and in the right side we will write the flip flop inputs which would be s and r in this case so in the left side there are two variables q and q plus so there would be that would be four different combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 all right so now we need to understand that how we can write the s and r values all right so here for the first row we can see the present state and next state values are 0 and 0 so we'll go back to the characteristic table and we'll see that we'll try to find out those combinations from the present state and next state column where both of both the values are 0 as 0 and 0 all right so we can see that the first two rows here indicate that in both of these rows the present state and next state are regarded as 0 and 0 all right so these are the two combinations and for both of these rows we can see that s produced the value of s was actually 0 all right the value of s was 0 in both of these cases since both of these cases produced 0 as the value for s that's why we can write 0 right here all right however for r we got 0 in one case and 1 in another that means we could not come to a specific value uh, could not come to uh, we could not uh, actually decide on a specific value so r was 0 in one case and 1 in another case since we have confusion that's why we will not write 0 or 1 here we'll just use don't cares since we are not confirm that uh, what the value would be all right so again I'm repeating the same thing again so for the first row we got 0 and 0 in the present and next stage so we'll go back to the characteristic table and we'll find those specific uh, rows where both the present state and next state are 0 and 0 so we can see that the first two rows right here in both of these rows the present state and next state are 0 and 0 all right so for both of these cases we can see that the value of s were 0 and 0 that means 0 in both cases so that's why we wrote 0 here all right however in the case of r uh, the value was 0 in one case and 1 in another case since the value uh, since the since the values were different so we could not basically come to a specific decision so that's why we're going to use don't care here we will not write 0 or 1 we'll just use don't care all right so moving forward the next combination is 0 1 so we'll go back to the characteristic table okay the next combination is 0 1 we'll go back to the characteristic table and we'll try to find the specific row that has 0 and 1 as the present state and next state value respectively so this is the row all right so present state 0 and next state 1 and in this case uh, this is the only possible case from the characteristic table and based upon this case the s and r values were 1 and 0 since this is the only case so we'll just write those values in s and r so s1 and r0 so now the next combination which is 1 0 so this is the only combination from this characteristic table where the present state is 1 and next state is 0 and s was 0 and r was 1 for this specific case and we're just going to write those values s equals to 0 and r equals to 1 and finally for 1 and 1 so there are two separate combinations here so this is one row and this is another row so in both of these cases the present state and next state were 1 and 1 all right so in both of these cases we can see that the value of r was 0 in both cases right so you can see that here the value is 0 and here the value is 0 again since both the cases produced 0 as the value for uh, for r so we're just going to write 0 in the place of r however in the case of s we can see that the value was 0 in one case and 1 in another another case so that means we could not come to a specific decision and the values were different in both cases so that means we're just going to write don't care in the place of s 
alright so whenever you get two different values in two different cases you're just going to write don't care and whenever you get the same value for all cases you write that specific value all right so this is how we can build the excitation table from the characteristic table so basically you just uh, wrote the characteristic table you just organize the characteristic table and wrote it in a different way and this is the excitation table all right so that's it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will we'll be learning about d flip-flop